everybody, DTX720 here, and uh, and I I, I kind of wanted to try something a little bit different here. Um, I wanted to, uh, as you can see today, we're doing a tier list video. I wanted to. Um, a lot of people like the Pokemon content on my channel, and so I figured, why not let uh, my now 55 subscribers, anyone else who sees this video, hit the like and subscribe button. By the way. I want to let everybody know about my favorite Pokemon, and other than doing a top 10, which I'm planning on doing sometime in the future, um, those are in the works, don't worry about it, just a little tease, anyways, I wanted to, I wanted to do the typical, oh, the typical YouTube thing of tier lists, everybody likes watching tier lists though, so it's not, it's not completely a cheap cop out, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm just doing it for the views, not really. Anyways, we're doing a tier list of all of the new Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. We're doing a Gen 8 tier list right now of the Galar region. Um, yeah, let's just let's just get right into it, and I'll tell you guys my favorite Pokemon here. Alrighty, well look at here I, I customized the little the little sides of the tier list thing. Also, I want to mention that I I, I even took the time to put. Pikachu and L kid right there in the background. Got a little bit of fancy background uh, uh, elements. <laughs> Regardless, let's get to the damn tier list. Uh, we have our categories. We have love them, which it's self-explanatory. These are the Pokemon I love. This is the top highest tier, god tier, if you will. Pokemon that are just cool. They're okay, meh, and then Pokemon that I, I dislike. Let's let's get on to that. Let's. Uh, <clears throat> we're gonna start with the starters. Obviously, um, well, not obviously, but so we're gonna start the starters first. I know that you guys can see that they're they have all the Galar forms here first, but I'm gonna get to the Galar forms later. Um, I'm putting Grookey right in love him. I love Grookey, he's really cute. Um, freaking, I, I originally when I was going with Sword and Shield, I was gonna pick a, a different starter, like Grookey was my last choice, but then I immediately seen the cutscene in the game. And something drew me to picking Grookey. That rhymed. Um, but yeah, I really like Grookey. And he is my favorite starter in uh, Sword and Shield. I love Grookey. And then we're going to get on to Thwacky, his evolved form. I'm going to say Thwacky is okay. The reason that being is the cute little Grookey like, goes through his teenage phase. All Pokemon's teenage phases are kind of ugly and awkward. <laughs> but... Especially Thwackies. It looks really weird. Um, it's not that bad though. A lot of people, a lot of people, say that the design is really ugly or really dumb um, with Thwacky, but I kind of like it. It's not that bad. It's, 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 it's dealable. You know, like it doesn't really bug me as much as it bugs other people. So that's why I'll put it in okay. Um, I like the two sticks that he got. It's also an upgrade from the one stick. And then we got our boy. We got Rillaboom, the final one. I'll also put him in love him. Uh, I love I love Rillaboom. Grookey evolved into a really cool Pokemon that really worked for me on my team in Sword and Shield through my first playthrough. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't drink any water before doing this. It might be the Rona. Just kidding. Calm down. Tested negative. <laughs> Anyways, it's just the summertime allergies. We got Rillaboom on the top. I love Rillaboom. Rillaboom is... He's he's really cool. It's a damn gorilla that plays drums. He looks like he's he's like an eighties hairband like drum player and he's really strong. I like to use him. Even though he's a pure uh, it'd be cool if he was grass fighting maybe instead of just grass. I, I wish all the starters had a uh, secondary typing, but that's beside the point. Then we got we got Score Bunny. I'm gonna put Score Bunny in cool and a lot of people are gonna a lot of people are gonna get on me for this, but Score Bunny is the starter that I like the least um, in terms of the baby forms. I think Grookey and Sobble are more cuter or even more cute than Score Bunny in my opinion. Um, that's also kind of, you guys will learn um, in these tier list videos and videos I do in Pokemon. I really like, I don't really like that, <clears throat> like, uh, I don't really like the Pokemon that are like, uh, you like upbeat and stuff like that. I like the ones that are like really cool or they're like cute, like in a really cute way or in other, like it's kind of hard to explain, but um, 
he's he's too he <clears throat> I forgot his damn name. <laughs> no. How did I just forget his name? The freaking rabbit. I forgot his name. I don't know how I did that. I didn't mean to shake the camera either. I'm sorry. Um, whatever. Moving on to Raboot. I think Raboot also goes in the same spot as uh, as the wacky. Uh, he looks like he's like a Naruto ninja or something like that, wearing like a track a track suit. I uh, don't really like it. It's kind of weird that he goes from being a like a naked little rabbit, Score Bunny does, to that's his name, Score Bunny, to being like uh, I don't know. It looks. It just looks like they're kind of not the same Pokemon. That's my opinion, though. They kind of look like they're not a line of each other. Like, he goes from this, having these up top, like, fire ears, and then immediately his ears go droopy and he gets kind of emo. Um, speaking of emo, we'll, we'll get to those later. We'll get to emo kid over here later. But, uh, Raboot, I'm also... That's not Raboot. That's Cinderace. My bad. Cinderace, I'll also put in cool. I don't love Cinderace that much. And I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to just throw all the starters at the top. Cinderace is really cool. But personally, it's not really my my gem. No, 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 those starters, their evolved forms, they're all kind of lackluster. In my opinion, at least. I don't... Like, Inteleon also is... Is something. We'll get onto that. Um, something about Inteleon, Raboot's designs, I don't really like that much. They went with really humanoid designs for all three of the starters this this time. And I don't really know if I really agree with it. Be quiet, phone. Get out of here. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's my thoughts on Cinderace. His, his moves are really cool, though. And I know he's, like, a, probably logistically, like, the best starter in terms of, like, you know, stats and everything. But, you know, we're talking about... This is my opinion, okay? Tell me what you think in the in the description down below. But then we're going to go on to Sobble. I'm going to put Sobble in Love It because I love Sobble and his little crybaby... He's a sobber. He cries. Sobble's really cute. It was really going to be... When I first saw the trailers for Sword and Shield, I was going to pick Score Bunny or Sobble. Because I really was going to pick Sobble, though. And then I was kind of considering Score Bunny, but I already kind of knew I didn't want to choose Score Bunny. And then I, I, I kind of already... I, I just knew that I wanted to pick Sobble when the game came out. And then literally, I was going to pick Sobble even when I was about to play the game. And then um, the like the cutscene of getting the starters like somehow immediately changed my mind and I went with Gookie. That's funny how... Pokemon does that to you sometimes. Um, Sobble is really cute, though, so I put him in love. And we're going to put uh, Emo Boy. I kind of like his design. A lot of people don't. I'm still going to put it in okay, though. Um, I really like I like how he gets like green a little bit because I love the color green. Um, a lot of people in Pokemon don't like green, though. Like Everybody hates on the green shinies and stuff. I like green. Um, green's my favorite color. Um... I typically like the water and fire starters more in Pokemon games. That's why I was actually pleasantly surprised that I chose Grookey and Rillaboom. Like, they're my first, um, my first, like, first time playthrough grass Pokemon, if that makes sense. Like, I've played Sceptile before playing uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but those, I've played Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald in the past on the Game Boy Advance, and I played Omega... I, I've, all the times I played my favorite Pokemon games being the Hoenn games, I chose Swampert or Blaziken. Um, and then, so when I got my third chance, which was uh, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, the remakes, then I picked Sceptile. But the first time around, before the remakes came out, I chose, I didn't choose the Grass-type starter yet. So I, in my opinion, that kind of doesn't count. But, you know, you know like, your first time go around through a generation... Grookey and him were my first two choices. So I actually, when I was going to go with Sobble, um, I kind of really like this guy. This uh, I cannot remember Emo guy's name. Why can't I? Drizzle. That's his name, Drizzle. I remembered. Drizzle looks kind of cool, though. I kind of like it. Um, then we're going to get on Inteleon. I'm putting Inteleon into meh. Something about Inteleon's design. A lot of people say the same thing. And Teleon, he's starting to grow on me. Like, I, I've gotten more over it since, like, the first time we've seen Inteleon. I've kind of gotten over it a little bit more. But, um... Nah, you know, and I'll put Inteleon at the top of okay. He's grown on me more than a meh. When I first seen Inteleon, I was just like, oh my gosh. That's the weirdest starter design ever. But, you know, he's actually kind of grown on me. Especially because, um... 
I, I also, me and my girlfriend both had Pokemon Sword and Shield. We bought the, like, double pack that they had when the game came out. And she chose Sobble slash Inteleon, you know, when you get up there. Um, but she never finished her copy, like, when Animal Crossing came out. Like, she, she takes forever to play Pokemon games. Like, they bore her or something. Um, which is a sin. <laughs> uh, but... So she never finished her copy of, of Pokemon Shield, so I finished it for her, um, and it, uh, I really liked Inteleon there. So it wasn't that bad. Let's get on, now that we're done with the starters, let's get on to one of these gal Galar forms here. Um, <clears throat> let's go with, oh, oh, okay, okay. Calarian Ponyta goes in love because oh my god it's so cute and gorgeous and it's so pretty i really want like a plush of it and i love the colors of claire and ponyta and that it's a fairy type i think it should have been i think when it evolves it's a psychic fairy type i could be wrong there but uh it really does look like it fits that like it should be a psychic fairy type and it kind of looks like clouds or something it's really pretty but then we get on to rapidash I think Rap Galarian Rapidash is really cool and it's worth using in the game, but for some reason I feel like the design doesn't really fit when it comes to the Galarian Ponyta. Galarian Ponyta looks like fluffy and cute, and, you know, colorful. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, you know what I mean. You know, you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Sorry, Oof. I could not get that word out. Blah, blah, blah. But Galarian Rapidash, for some reason, the design takes, like, it goes from being that cute, like, fluffy, like, poofy look, which I really love about it. Um, and then it goes to, like, it kind of makes it look like it's Play-Doh. Does anybody else see that? It kind of, its hair kind of looks like it's, like, Play-Doh. Um, and that kind of drags it down for me. So I'll put it there. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um... Let's go on to Rookity. I like Rookity. Rookity's okay. He's an okay, cute little bird. I like Rookity. Not much more to say there. We're going to go on to Squavit. Squavit. No. Corvus Squire. Why did I say Squavit? Who's Squavit? I don't, I don't even remember. See, I'm losing my mind. When you're put on the spot when you're recording a video, it, it, it makes you lose your mind. I'm also going to put uh, Corvus Squire here. Um, it's an interesting middle stage. I, I, I wish it would have kept the... I can see where it's going, though. It goes from a bright bird evolving to, like, a darker gray bird. And then you can tell that at that point, like, you could tell that, oh, that's what that's Corviknight. That's that's Corviknight's pre-evolutions. But at first, when you get Rookity, you kind of don't really realize that it's going to evolve into Corviknight. At least I didn't because it goes from being, like, a bright blue and a yellow. Then it uses loses the yellow. And then it kind of loses the bright blue a little bit more. And it goes uh, to complete, like, metal-looking, like, dark purple-esque or blackish. And that being said, Corviknight is going on top. Corviknight is awesome, and it's great to use in battle. Corviknight was on my team. I love Corviknight. Um, it was fun to use in the game, and he's so cool. Nevermore lives on the Raven. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Corviknight has a badass design. It's a knight. That's a bird. It's really cool. Um, go on to, this is Squavit, I believe. You're Squavit. Squavit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in a meh. It's, it's typical for an early route, um, it's a, a typical early route, you know, Pokemon normal type. Um, but, you know, it's a squirrel, and I'm surprised they haven't really done very many squirrels. Um, he's really cute, though. Um, I do like Greedent more, because he looks like a, uh... He looks like like a, a, a Looney Tunes character. Like a, he looks very cartoonish, um, and I don't know why he reminds me because he's like a red-tailed squirrel by the looks of it. It really reminds me of Conker, even though Conker and him don't really have much of a resemblance. You can kind of tell that he's a red-tailed squirrel, and that's what Conker is. So, Conker's Bad Fur Day is my favorite video game of all time, by the way. Um, so I, yeah, I kind of like I like how we got a squirrel here. I would name him Conker if he wasn't so fat and non-Conker looking. Um, all right, all right, hot takes. A lot of people like Gossifleur. I don't like Gossifleur. I don't. I, I don't like Gossifleur. A lot of people think it's cute or something. I can see the cuteness. But something about its design really, like, weirds me out. Because 
I have I have like OCD <laughs> in like about certain things and it really bugs me how like it has a big old flower on its head and its body is like a tiny little like like stick like it looks like a bouquet of flowers but its body looks like a tiny little stick it doesn't have legs so it's just supposed to stand up on that like genie looking tail thing and support all this weight it doesn't it bugs me I don't know why it, it bugs me I don't really like it and the same I'm gonna put Elder Goss in meh I like Elder Goss's design more than I like Gossifler's but Elder Goss doesn't look like it's finished the Gossifler Elder Goss line does not look like it's finished it should evolve one more time a lot of people say that also but it's true I really like that it's like a big old cotton puff it's like those you know when you get with uh, dandelions when they like like turn into the poofy cotton whatever form and you blow on it and it goes away um, yeah you guys yeah, yeah you know what I mean um, I like that but it, it, it looks like it's not done and I can see why it's elder goss because it kind of looks like a granny but I don't know it kind of bugs me um, let's go with our boy Galarian Weezing I was going in order but I'm gonna hop around a little bit Galarian Re Weezing I think is cool I really like his you know how he got the chimney stacks on his head he's like because Weezing you know puffs out the smoke and everything and now he's like the embodiment of pollution which is kind of what Weezing was in the first place but I like how the his smoke which was like kind of black and uh black purplish whatever um goes to green which it kind of was already a little bit of a green but I really like the green I would like how he gets a mustache and they look like kind of like you know, mm -hmm. what do you say, sir? You know, like elegant guys or whatever, however you want to say that. And the top hats are like, are the stacks, smoke stacks from like a pollution factory. It's like here in Colorado in Commerce City. <laughs> um, let's go to our boy. Let's do it. It's Wulu, okay? I'm going to put Wulu in cool. I like Wulu. <laughs> a lot of people are going to get mad at me because everybody loves Wulu. Everybody would be like, oh, Wulu is like God tier. Wulu goes all the way up here. All the way up here. But, but, Wulu, I, it just might, might just be me being a freaking hipster, but I don't, I don't love Wulu. Like, if I had to choose between cuteness, I would totally say that Glare and Rapidash is cuter than Wulu. But Wulu is still cool. Dub Wool, though. I'm gonna say double wool is okay. Double wool. I'm gonna put double wool. I'm gonna put it like above Thwacky. I'll put it right there. Double wool is okay. Um, I really like how he's like a, a goat like ram. Ram like goat. That's like ball shaped. I like how the, the colors are like kind of inverse and then they add the gray in there because, you know, white and black equals gray. <laughs> And I like, I, I kind of like how he has like other horns going down here, which I, I think it's because it like curves around, but I think, no, it doesn't curve around. It just ends here. So he just has two other horns sticking out there too, which is cool. Um, gonna go with blip bug, blip bug, blip bugs a meh. I'm going to say blip bugs a meh. Blip bug is, he's kind of cute, but, um, blip bug it's kind of hard to see what's going on there. I can't really... His eyes are really weird. His eyes bug me. And then he has like a little tie. But it kind of looks like that tie could be his mouth or something. I don't know. But then hardcore, you go to Dotler. I really love Dotler. I love how when you're looking at it in-game, um, Dotler, how it goes like... It's like the balls on it. You know, the, the, the circles, they like glow. And when they do attacks, they like... Like they glow. It's really cool. It's like fireflies, kind of. Um, same thing with uh, with this guy. I can't remember his name. Why can't I remember his name? Why? I'm blanking on it. But uh, uh, Dotler's evolution. What's the name? What is the name? I do not know the name. I it's lost on me but I'm gonna put I'm gonna put him in cool also I really love it I like how he's like a UFO especially in his Gigantamax form um but those also glow 
I love how, you know, it's really cool. It's like a ladybug, but like an alien kind of. He looks like he has like a big old brain like sticking out like Mars Attacks or something. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, I'm going to put this guy, put this guy in meh, Galarian Stunfisk. I like him more than normal Stunfisk. I like that he's like a bear trap or they did something like kind of unique with it. And it, like the Pokeball makes it look like like when you go try to grab Pokeball in the game and then he like tries to bear trap you. It's cool. It's a good concept, but it kind of ends there because like Stunfisk is kind of like an ugly Pokemon anyway. And I know it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be ugly, but I don't like it. Ooh, Nickit. I like Nickit. Nickit is cool. Same thing with Thievil. I love their old fashioned like thief robber looking style, especially this guy. He looks like like a freaking a thief in the uh, in like the sixties. 50s 60s like wearing like a little like a you know bandana mask and walking around like <laughs> he looks like kind of like a raccoon in a way but i really like it he's really cool he has like a little mustache too like he looks like like a frenchman like oh huh, i will steal the jewels it's very funny i really like yamper yamper's cute i love yamper and to that extent i also really like bolton I really like Bolton. Uh, but do I like that much? No, I don't like Bolton that much. I'm going to put Bolton. Bolton goes in cool. I was originally going to have Bolton on my team, but then I found a better electric type, which we will surely get to. And I I'm, I know you guys know who I'm talking about, but I found a better electric type, and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bolton. You're a good boy, but you're going back into the PC because I'm going to pull out an, a, a bad boy. I'm going to pull out the, the rocker of bad boy. We got Choodle. I, I think Choodle's design is weird. It's like all kinds of weird. Like his big old head can't fit in that little shell. He, It's like weirdly shaped head. His eyes are like weird. His like, his like tooth bugs me. And his little like Pikachu looking like cheeks. It's really weird. But then you get to Dreadnought. Dreadnought, I love Dreadnought. Dreadnought is so cool as a Pokemon. I love Dreadnought. It's like a freaking alligator snapping turtle. It's so cool. It kind of looks like like its jaw is like steel. It makes it kind of look kind of robotic-like. It's so cool. I love Dreadnought. Dreadnought was on my team also in Sword and Shield. Had very great use. I love Dreadnought. Um, <clears throat> let's go to Galarian Zigzagoon, which is in the cool category. I love Galarian Zigzagoon. And I love Galarian Linoon. They look like Kiss. Um, I really like, you know... I like how they're sticking their tongue out and they go from being like the cute like little little dog things in Lanoon. And then they also get the their evolved form right here. Obstagoon is also another cool. Hell yeah. Obstagoon is dope. He looks super cool. He's literally like Gene Simmons, the Pokemon. It's it's really cool. And I like how in Galar they did that. They not only gave Pokemon Galar forms, but they gave them like evolutions like it's really cool same thing with like surfetched which we'll get to let's actually just do that right now glare and farfetched i'm gonna say it's a meh because the only difference is is he he's still like the same thing as a farfetched he's a little bit darker he's pissed off and he has a big old leak that's the only difference but you get to surfetched and surfetched is hella so i love surfetched he's so cool he's like he turns into like a golden duck like white and gold and he has a lance, or what seems like a lance, big old sword lance. And he got his, like, leaky branch shield. And he's ready to tear stuff up. And he's really good, especially when he has, like, a leak item on him also. It, like, gives him bigger crits. Crazy. I love it. Uh, Aracuda. I think Aracuda's okay. Same thing with, I'm going to say Barascuda is cool, though. I like Barascuda. Aracuda's okay. He kind of looks like just, you know, normal old fish, which is what he is. But um, when you get to Barrascuda, Barrascuda looks really cool. And I like how his tail spins like it's a propeller. It's nice. Then we get on to Galarian Meowth. I'm going to say Galarian Meowth is okay. I, I like Galarian Meowth. I really like how he got all fuzzy. Um, when we get to Galarian Berserker... Glaren Berserker, 
I'm also, I think, going to put in okay. Um, I'm gonna, I would put them a little lower. I would put them in meh. But I put them in okay simply because the fact is I actually got a random encounter shiny of Glaring Meowth um, on the route in Sword and Shield before the grass gym where you can, like, find them. Um, I was, like, just walking around in those flower petals, like, just jacking around. I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't even, like, purposefully shiny hunting. It was just, like, a random shiny that and it was an overworld shiny like i seen the little meowth and he wasn't shiny like i couldn't see him because he was in the he was in like the the yellow flowers and if you've seen the shiny version of glaring meowth it's yellow it's like gold so i didn't know that there was even a pokemon there and then it touched me and then it started an encounter and it was a shiny and then like i evolved it obviously into the glaring berserker well normal berserker um it's another one of those uh, evolutions that they added but it makes makes them all like gold. So I really like I, I like their shinies more than I like their actual forms. Uh, I hope I can like pull their shiny gold cards and the rebels clash. Um, <laughs> well, that's that's for a different video. Um, okay, these are hot takes, man. I'm gonna put Clobopus in meh. As well as Grapple Locked. Nah, I'll put Grapple Locked in okay. I put these guys really low. I really like Grapple Locked's design. I like the idea that they're like fighting. Same thing with Clawpuss. I like that they're like fighting Octopi. Or uh, squids. Octopi. Um, but it really bugs me. It bugs the living hell out of me that they're not water types. They're pure fighting. They're pure fighting Octopi. And it's weird because they're octopi, octopuses, <laughs> octopi. They're they they're spo they they live in water. Their species lives in water. It bugs me. Like, it really bugs me. And I know it's not a big deal to some people, but oh my god, they should they need to be water types. It bugs the hell out of me. Especially because when you like you can encounter grapplelocks in the wild on that snowy route, and they're swimming. They're swimming in the water. <laughs> but they're. They're not water types. Like, you encounter them in the water. It's weird. They're fish. But you didn't get them in water type. I guess they need more pure fighting types in the game. Let us do Applin. Okay, so Applin by itself, I say is meh. Okay? Because it's literally just an apple with, like, eyes. So therein lies, I say it's meh. I do like how it's a little tail. You can't really see in this picture, but it does have like a little worm looking tail. But Applin goes in meh because it's an apple. It's literally just an apple. But then when you get on to Flapple, Flapple is cool. I like Flapple, how he like. It's like as if he evolved and he burst out of the, he like he burst out of it and he uses the apple as wings and he also has like a base. Um, it's really cool. But it's not as cool as Appleton. I love Appleton's design. Appleton looks so cool. Looks like a nice, delicious apple pie. Um, I like his little helmet. Uh, Appleton just looks cool. It looks like a cute little dragon. Um, but Flapple, Flapple kind of looks a little bit weaker than Appleton. It looks like they should be like evolutions rather than split evolutions. Like. Flapple looks like it could be a middle stage from, you know, Applin, then to Flapple, then Appleton. But no, they're actually two different stages, which is interesting, um, depending on what game you have. But you can also, like, find them. Yeah, whatever. Galarian Darumaka. I'm, I want to say it's a meh. Um, Galarian, uh, that's Darmanitan. No, wait. No, you are Darumaka. Sorry. Galarian Darumaka literally is just Darumaka, but it's snowy instead of red that's that's the difference um but when you get to galarian darmanitan galarian darmanitan is cool he's a damn snowman here's his other form too his fire type form gosh they're cool the fire type form makes him like turn into like a snowman if you could see it and the fire is kind of like a carrot uh i really like that they did the ice fire typing with this um and I really like his design. He looks like a cool, like, Yeti. An abominable snowman. Um, Silicobra. I love Silicobra because I love snakes. 
So the Cobra goes in cool. But Santa Conda goes in love it. I love Santa Conda. I think it's cool how he's like coiled up. He, and then like his Gigantamax form is like a tornado of dust because sand, you know, he lives in sand. He's a desert like Anaconda snake. Really cool. Um, Roly Coley. I'm going to say Roly Coley's a dislike. That's my second dislike in the Galar decks. I don't know. It's it's a piece of coal with a wheel and one, like, fiery eye. You know, it's not really, like, the most epic design ever. It's not that bad, though. Um, but I dislike it. Car coal, I put in okay. I'll put car coal in okay instead of in meh. Simply because of the fact that the gimmick that they have in Surge Shield when you're going through the Galar Mines and Karkul is actually riding on the rails. That's kind of funny and cool. And he's actually like, you, he actually has a head and a face like more than more than this guy over here has. And we get Colossal. Colossal is cool. I like Colossal. Um, his abilities. Uh, he has Steam Engine, I believe, which means like if he gets hit by the fire or water type move, he'll increases speed which is what he needs because he has crappy speed but i think it's really cool I, I i like the idea that he's like kind of like an incinerator like a furnace like you add coal to it and it like powers up and he's also kind of like a train in a way so i really like it cramorant i love the derpy bird man i love cramorant i dislike uh, uh, yeah yeah i think i, I do love cramorant and here's here's his other two forms here <laughs> the gulping I don't know why they included those images on the tier list but there you go his gulping forms Cramorant is a derpy bird and derpy birds are funny everybody loves derpy birds if you don't like derpy birds what's your problem I like Cramorant I feel like he should have like a I feel like he should maybe have like one pre-evolution maybe like a like a, a little derpy bird like come out of like an egg or something that'd be cool um, but I like him. Let me get on to some of my favorite Pokemon in Sword and Shield. I love Centiscorch and Sizzlepeed. They're so badass. The design is badass. And they're a really good Pokemon to use in Sword and Shield. Another one of my team members. Um, Sword and Shield Sword and Shield has a lot of really good Pokemon. A lot of really good Pokemon that I love. Um, it was really hard to construct a team when you're playing through this game it's really hard because you only get six options and you you know there's so many cool ones like the like um, one of my biggest regrets is that i didn't get to use a dracapult on my team the only reason why i didn't get to use dracapult on my team is because they're really hard to get um in the game like when you're just playing through as a normal playthrough like there's only like a one percent chance during a thunderstorm in the wild area it's a pain it's a pain but talking on on these guys, send a scorch and sizzlepeed. They were also a pain. They finding a sizzlepeed on that one route before the mine. I can't think about what it is. I think it's like route three or something or four. I don't know. Finding them on that route. Oh my goodness. It's also like it's random encounters, but it's like a two percent encounter. Like oh my god, why did they do that? Why did they make it a 2%? Of, such a cool Pokemon is like so hard to accept, uh, like get. And it's on an early round too. It's not even like in the wild area. I can understand with like Dreepy, Dracolo, Dracopult. I can understand why they would be kind of hard to get. Because they're the pseudo legendary of the game. And they're really powerful. And they don't want you just run around with those things the entire game. But when it comes to Sizzlepeed, they put it on a route that you're supposed to be able to get it that early in the game. But it's a 2% encounter. That really annoys me, but that's besides the point. Um, we get on to Sinistee and Poltegeist. I say Sinistee is okay. Um, it's a teacup. I think it's cute how it's like ghost and it's like leaking out a little bit. And he's holding his own little cup. I like Sinistee though. Sinistee is cool. I mean Poltegeist, sorry. Poltegeist is cool. I love tea. If anybody doesn't know, my drink of choice is is some delicious sweet tea, which I have this in this big old jug right here delicious that was proof that was proof right there i just drank tea on camera i love sinistee i don't well i think sinistee is cool i don't love sinistee though um sinistee is just really neat uh it's a good pokemon design concept it's it's cool 
continues on that lineage of ghosts possessing items in the Pokemon world. Um, oh, now, now we're here. We are here at Pokemon that are just straight up godlike. Uh, so, so Toxel, all right, Toxel goes here. Toxel goes into the cool category. But Toxtricity, especially the amped form, oh, I love it so much. He is the ace of my team. Toxtricity was the ace of my team during my Let's Play. Go check it out. If you haven't played Sword and Shield and you haven't played with Toxtricity for some reason, what's your problem? He's like the best electric type in the game. Like, it's so fun to use. And his ability, the, you know, amplifies sound moves. And then if you have his own move overdrive which is a sound type electric move that is stab plus the boost of the ability oh it destroys it's also a poison type poison electric type is so cool and his design is so cool the mohawk the it's so cool he plays the guitar it's dope i don't know what else to say um i will say though his low key form is is just cool for me i don't really like low key form as much as i like the amp form. The amp form is, is amazing. Low key form kind of looks like like his dumb sidekick. Even though it's still cool to use also. Um, but it's like a bit more kind of defensive I would say in a way. Um, rather than offensive. Um, just due to its ability. But I, 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 just, I just prefer this version. I like the amp version way more. And then we get on to some other Pokemon that I love. Each one of them Hatena, Hatchroom, and Hatterene. I love them. I really love them. And you guys are going to see a trend here that a lot of the Pokemon in Sword and Shield I really love. Um, I, I really think highly about Sword and Shield's new Pokemon. They're all really cool. It's really hard for me to put the ones that are, you know, the ones low, low. It's hard to do it, but I, I kind of have to. Um, Hatterene, though, beautiful. These two are cute. They look like Kirby characters. Hatterene is like majestic and mysterious and it's a psychic um, psychic fairy type. It looks like a witch. She's really pretty. I love it. I love Hatterene. She's awesome. Um, I'm simping on Hatterene. Uh, not not as hardcore as all the people on like DeviantArt and stuff. But, uh, but there you go. Um, she's like in the same camp. Hatterene is like in the same camp as like Gardevoir in a way. They're, like, very similar. Um, Gardevoir might be, like, a little bit faster, but they both fit that same archetype where it's, like, a female-looking um, psychic fairy-type Pokemon that's, like, really strong um, special attack. So it's she's really nice to use. She, her, she is butt slow, but, like, snail slow, but it's really worth using. Um, Impidimp. I would say Impidimp is okay. Impidimp's nice. Morgram is okay, too. Um, I like how slowly they turn more green over time. Impidimp at first, when I first seen him, it kind of, he kind of like looked weird. Like you're just like, whoa, weirdest looking Pokemon ever right there. But he's kind of grown on me. He's kind of cute how he's like, bleh, bleh, trying to be all like spooky or something. Grimmsnarl though, Grimmsnarl is super cool. Grimmsnarl is just a little bit short of me putting it in the love category. I really like Grimmsnarl. Um... Grimmsnarl is really cool, man. Like, he, he's just really cool. And he's also a really good Pokemon to use. Uh, I used him when I played through Monica's um, game. And it was really fun. Same with, like, Sanaconda and, uh, and Appleton, too. So that's why I think so highly of them. Then we get on to, let's say, Galarian Mr. Mime. I'm going to put him in meh. I honestly, I can say this for sure. I actually like creepy old normal Mr. Mime more than I like Galarian Mr. Mime, which is a lot of people don't like Mr. Mime. Um, I like the original Mr. Mime more than I like him. He's just like cold and he's like dancing. He's like jolly. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't really work for me. Mr. Rhyme is just okay. Something about, I just don't like Mr. Rhyme. I don't like how he has two faces. Like one's on his belly and he has a cane. He, Mr. Rhyme looks cool. Like, he looks like a dapper, like, gentleman. Like, he looks like like Charlie Chaplin or something. Like, he looks like he's going to perform for you and do, like, a sing-along or something. Or or do jokes or magic or something. But for some reason, I don't know why I don't trust him. 
<laughs> I don't trust him. I feel like he's like a swindler. Like he'll he'll be like, I'll perform a dance for you, and then when you turn your back, he's gonna steal your wallet and then like stab you. <laughs> I don't know why I get that feeling. I don't know why. Okay. We have our third dislike of the video. Pincurchin. Pincurchin's the idea of Pincurchin is a really good idea. And I'm putting him in dislike for this one detail. And it's the same detail as Graplock and Clavopus. Pincurchin is not a water type. And it really should be. And it bugs the hell out of me. <laughs> it's it's an urchin. It really it, urchins belong or urchins come from the ocean. And I understand that it's an electric type urchin cuz like it like kind of like it hurts when you get stung by an urchin and it's kind of like shocking like and you don't want to do another poison water type. If you did him as an electric water type, you know, it'd be cool. It'd be nice. You know, find one that was at the bottom of the ocean and it's like glowing a little bit and you're like, "Ooh, what's that? Ow, it poked me." You know what I mean? Like that's that should be there, but it's not a water type. It annoys the hell out of me. I don't know why it's not a water type. So for that reason alone, I put in dislike. I kind of like its design though, but it's in dislike. I hate it. I hate that thing. I hate that. Galarian Corsola though is cool. I really like Galarian Corsola. Galarian Corsola. It's sad, but it's really cool. Same thing with Cursola. Galarian Cursola turns into a ghostly freaking shell of a of a dead coral. Um, it's really cool, and you can see like. Corsola's like face or whatever like the spirit is still in there but it's like a scary looking ghost with like a scary kind of face and the the coral looking ghost pieces make it kind of look like it has like arms uh I like it stone journer eh stone journer is a meh I used to hate stone journer when Pokemon Short and Shield first came out I would have put stone journer in dislike but Stone, Stone Journer has grown on me a little bit more. Because um, it, it kind of is a unique design. It's like, it's Stonehenge as a Pokemon. But it's still kind of like weird. It's one of those weird designs that a lot of people don't like. Um, a lot of people would say that they don't like the inanimate object looking Pokemon. I disagree in, certain, in some cases. Like for instance, I love Sinisty and Poltergeist. I love... You know, I love Vanillux. You know, I love I love Trubbish and Garbodor. So I, I don't hate all Pokemon that are like kind of like objects that are Pokemon. But Stone Journer being like living Stonehenge, it's kind of like like okay. It's it's just like meh. It's it's literally like I'm shrugging my shoulders as I'm telling you. It's literally the definition of the meh category. Um, then we go into Galarian Yamask, which I'm gonna put as okay. The only difference is really it's like a different like color-ish of purple. It's eye color changed and it has like a rune instead of the mask. And then we get on to Rune Arigus, which is cool. Rune Arigus looks, he looks cool. Like a ghost possessing the like runes. That's it, really cool. It's hard to explain. It looks like a dragon kind of. The rune on it does. It's really cool though. Milsery. I'll put Milsery in meh. Milsery, it looks kind of funny if you want to think about it that way, and I know some people do. Um, it's like, it's just like floating milk, which is, it's not like, I don't hate the fact that it's just floating milk, but I don't know, something about its design leaves more to be desired. But when you get to, when you get to this girl right here, she's, she's cute. I love it. Um, Grimmsnarl, will you move? Grimmsnarl, scoot your ass over. Graham Snarl, scoot over. Okay, never mind. Graham Snarl doesn't want to give up his position to uh, Al Creamy. But Al Creamy's cute, and I like the different ways you evolve it by spinning and giving it a different treat will make it a different color and different, you know, that. And the Gigantamax forms a big old cake. It's cool. We're going to go on. All right, all right, all right. Hot takes, hot takes. Snom is super cute, it's very simple. Very simplistic. It's like a little worm with just an eye. Little like prong mouth looking thingies. And it's like icy. But Snom's a god. As well as Frozmoth. So majestic and beautiful. Mothra. 
well, I guess Vol- Volcarona is more of a Mothra, but I love I love how it's one of those like fluffy white moths, like in real life. Um, it's so pretty, and it's perfect that it's an ice type because fluffy white moth, you know, it's like snow. So majestic. Get on to Phalanx, and I say Phalanx is okay. Um, I like the concept that it's like kind of like Spartan soldiers, but the one question I do have, and I still have yet to be answered, is Phalanx, the entire line, the, all six of those little things, because they're separate, they're all separate. Are each one of those a Phalanx, or is the unit of six Phalanx? Are they one thing? Are they one being controlled all by the same mind? Or are they, are they like all separate little Pokemon? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, we get on to Ice Q. Okay. I'm going to say Ice Q is a big meh. Um, I like that it's a penguin, but I don't... A lot of people do like it, but I think it, him like this, it just like looks... He looks kind of dumb. He looks doofy. Like his face and his little like... His little thingy. And he's supposed to look dumb and doofy because he wears this head thing. But even with his like ice square helmet thing i don't like it it's like it's kind of like the same thing i say for gossifler how it's like a big old block on your head it looks dumb it looks like you just have a big old head like it it's like it looks like he should be walking around like this like crap like his his neck hurts <laughs> gosh um i'm going to say Indeedy, these are, these are the male and female forms. I'm going to say they're also a meh. They're, again, uh, another trope in Pokemon games where there's the uh, the Pokemon that's like the Nurse Joy-esque Pokemon. Um, similar to like Chansey or Audino or insert one here. <laughs> um, yeah, they're... It's kind of like, like, like I said, it's stuck in that kind of, they're in that trope, which is kind of like, uh, which is kind of like an and because it's not really original. I do like how they have different gender differences though, which is neat, but they're not really, in my opinion, like usable at all. And then we get on to more Peko. I like more Peko. I like both forms. More Peko is cool. I like it. I like how he's like different colors too. It's a nice Pikachu clone in my opinion. It's original. I like the hangry form. Um, it's a good follow-up on last gen because last gen had like Mimikyu as like the best Pikachu clone ever and Togedemaru. It is an improvement over Togedemaru. I like his little hamster self. I like it. Um, get on to Qfint. Qfint is a meh. Well, I'll say Qfint's okay, actually. Same thing with Copperaja. They just kind of look weird to me. I wouldn't put them in meh, though, because I don't think they belong in the same category as everybody else here. Um, but they look weird. When you first see Qfint in the game, it's like the first new Pokemon you see when the game starts up. Um, Qfint is really weird. Um, it kind of look, doesn't look like a Pokemon. It doesn't... It looks like... It kind of looks different than everybody else. It looks different than every Pokemon, in my opinion. It really sticks out. It looks like a... Like a Digimon or something. Like, it's weird. Same thing with Copperaja. Copperaja takes a weird left turn from Qfint. Like, it goes from being this to being, like, like holy crap, color change entirely. And his his Gigantamax form is, like, god-awful. I hate it. I hate it. He's, like, a slab. A big old freaking nose. Squidward. It's like Squidward's house, the Pokemon. <laughs> All right. Here we get on to the poor, the poor bastards, the freaking fossils. But I do love the fossils. I love Dracozolt. I believe this is Dracozolt. I love Dracozolt. He, it actually kind of looks logistically right other than the fact that his body doesn't like, that half doesn't fit perfectly on that half. But something about it looks like it could actually work just as like a weird looking Pokemon. Um, and he's not as messed up as the other ones. Um, but then you get on to Arctozolt, I believe. I'm going to say Arctozolt's cool. It's really depressing, though, when you see Arctozolt shivering. Like, he's shivering like he's in pain, in constant pain. Because the rest of his body is just cold and his nose is running. And, oh my god, it's 
it's depressing. Like, put him out of his misery. Same thing with, with, oh my god, with Dracovish. But Dracovish is cool. It's a weird design. Like, his head is on the tail. Like, so it's like this. It's this half of this guy. But, like, here. But the head, instead of it being here, it's on the tail. The head is on the tail. And he, like, kill him immediately. Burn it with fire. It, it, it runs super fast on land, but it can't breathe on land. That's what the deck entry says, because it's half fish. Oh my god, put them out of their misery. Careless, why did you do this? You're careless. Then we go on to Arctivish, I believe. Arctivish is the most normal looking of them all. And that is because it kind of looks like it all fits together. Like uh, Arctivish's head. But it's funny, if you look at it, the only thing that is weird about it is the mouth is up here on the top, if nobody can notice that. Like, you see this mouth on this guy right here? It's it's up here. Yeah, his mouth is up here on his head. That's the only, like, weird thing about him. That's the mutated part about him. But he kind of looks like he actually just could be, like, a really cool fish. Um, yeah. But then... Then we have, we don't, oh, oh, we have, we have a couple left that are going to be big takes here. We got Duraludon. Duraludon looks, goes in okay. Duraludon maybe should have some evolutions. It should have at least one pre-evolution that does something interesting to kind of like, so you can see the progression a little bit more. But Duraludon's still cool. I like it. I like the skyscraper, like he kind of looks like a building. Um... I don't dislike his design, but it's, you know, it's okay. It's literally the definition of okay. Then we got Drapey, man. Drapey. Oh, wait, hold on. Set set that down. Drapey. My tier list is getting too full. Look at this. It doesn't work out. Okay, Drapey. You can barely see it, but there he goes. Drapey is in Love It as well as Dracoloak. Wait, wait, hold on. I got to inch it right there. Okay. Dracoloak. And Dracapult. They are... There they are right there. So you guys can see them in the love category. The most badass Pokemon in Sword and Shield. It's literally... It literally goes like this, in my opinion. Those are god-tier Pokemon. Their designs are so cool. Their typings are so cool. Like, he's dragon... He's dragon ghost type. And he's like a, a salamander, like an axolotl, kind of. Um, he looks like a freaking jet. Looks like he can cut you with his freaking, his phew. You know what I'm saying? And he shoots out other little dreepies. He's like protecting his children or her children. And freaking just, he just shoots them. Like rockets. They're little dragon missiles. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. And we got Zamazenta. I mean, this is Zacian. I love Zacian. I love her with the sword. I... I think the common thing, they're genderless, but Zacian is, like, supposed to be, like, the the sister of the two in, in terms of lore. I love Zacian. So badass. It's a freaking wolf with a sword. Like, straight out of Dark Souls or something. Badass. I'll also put, I'll also put Zamazenta, the shield Pokemon. I'll put Zamazenta also up there because... I really like Zacian more than I like Zamzenta, but they're kind of like one and the same, if that makes sense. You could tell they're based off of the kind of the same design aspect. They're both a wolf, but one is sword and one is shield. And they make them look very distinctly different, even though they're both wolves. And I like that. With their, with their other designs, I'll just put their other designs. For, for, for Zacian, their other design just goes in cool somewhere. Yeah. Zamazenta. I like Zamazenta's more. But, uh... But they're still just okay. Like, their their armored versions are so much cooler. Um, they're cool. I think Zamazenta has a really cool non-armored version, but I haven't really, like... Their naked forms, <laughs> that's what I call them, aren't really that cool. We get on to Neternatus. Or Eternatus. Sorry, not Neternatus. Eternatus. Eternatus and his crazy UFO form is cool because you see that when you're spoilers spoilers for a game that's been out for a long time already 
when you fight Eternatus in the final battle of Sword and Shield, pretty much, in the boss battle of Sword and Shield, it's literally a boss battle. It's crazy. It, you're fighting like a crazy looking UFO monster thing from like a different freaking dimension or something. It's really cool. It really works. And I'm going to set that there for a time. Second, Eternatus. It's a really cool design. And that's perfect for the cool category. I don't love Eternatus. There's some things about it where you're like, that thing doesn't even look like really like a Pokemon. It looks like it could be an Ultra Beast from like, from Sun and Moon. Like, all the Ultra Beasts are weirdos too. Like, we'll get, we'll get onto those guys in a different video, but holy crap. Eternatus is really cool. It really is. Um, it's a nice Pokemon to, mo to use. In my opinion, from when I used him, Eternatus kind of is like a glass cannon. Um, not his boss fight, of course, but when you're actually using Eternatus, it's kind of like a glass cannon. Um, at least from what, like, for some reason, every time I've used Eternatus, he gets, like, one shot immediately. He'll, like, he'll do a hit, and he'll most he'll be faster than a lot of Pokemon he fights, but he'll he'll be able to get off one powerful move. If he doesn't take them out, he's gonna die. Um, that's at least what I've done. Maybe I was stupid and I brought out Eternatus when I shouldn't have. Because his typing is a little interesting too. I believe he's Poison Dragon. But there we go, guys. There's our uh, our tier list. Our really big looking tier list that doesn't fit all on the screen. Of uh, That's our tier list of all of the new Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Including the Gather Forms. Um... I'm, I'm going to, over the next couple, I'm not going to say days, I'm going to say weeks. I think I'm going to do one of these for the next, one of these for the next coming weeks, one a week, um, for all the other generations of Pokemon. Um, but I really love Sword and Shield. I think Sword and Shield, when you look at Galar as a whole, when you look at all the new Pokemon, the new characters of the game, I think, I think it's really up there for me, personally as a really strong generation of Pokemon. Up there with like Hoenn and, and Kanto, I'd say. Like, I think Galar takes like third place there. And I really love Hoenn. And then you, you have, if you're a Pokemon fan, you kind of have to love Kanto. And I know some people don't love Kanto because they're, they want to be hipsters, but Kanto has like the most legendary, you know, everybody knows the Kanto Pokemon. I have a poster right here with all the Kanto Pokemon on it. Like, you can almost name like every Kanto Pokemon just off your head. But there you go. There's our tier list of, of Galar, um, of Gen 8 Pokemon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of these videos, hit the like and the subscribe button. Um, I'm, I'll be sure to do more of these tier list videos in the future. So I hope you enjoy, and I hope you stay tuned and see the next ones. Love you guys 3000. See you soon.